Hi, and welcome to Farm Life Australia. My name's Chris Monier. Tonight's episode is uh, talking all about eggs, the old humble googie egg. We all love them, we eat them for breakfast, uh, we eat them for dinner, we eat them in all sorts of different dishes. Uh, what I wanted to do is get a team of experts together to talk about barn, free range, cage, cage free, all these different systems you hear about. So we've put all these people together tonight to bring you the truth about eggs. So here we are on Farm Life Australia, episode one, the truth about eggs. I'm joined by some fantastic guests here. I've been really lucky to be joined by these gentlemen. On the end here, I've got James Kellaway, who's the uh, MD of the AECL. I've got Brian, Brian Ahmed from the uh, VFF. He's the president of the Egg Group. I've got David Skordick, who's a uh, lifetime farmer. How are you, Dave? How are you, Chris? Oh, I'm, I'm excellent, I'm excellent. Really glad to have you guys along today. Great to be here. Excellent, Thanks, excellent. Chris. So what I'd really love to do, just to get things going, um, James, I'd love to, if you could give us a little bit of an insight into where the egg industry sits at the moment. Well, it's interesting you say that. You know, the industry at the moment, it's a sunrise industry. Yep. The soon to approach high noon it is not a sunset industry at all. Okay. It has moved from being a cottage industry to really one that is a highly professional business uh, by farmers who care about a number of things. You know, they certainly care about uh, producing the safest and the highest quality product. Yep. They care about the environment, which includes the local community. Absolutely. Uh, they care about providing choice to consumers, which is important. Yep. Uh, they also care about uh, hen welfare and certainly looking after the well-being of the hens. Yep. And finally, they care about um, feeding a growing population, which is important Extremely. in terms of when we see where the, the world global population is going. So it is, it, is a, it is a robust industry, it is a growing industry, and an important one to the community. Yeah, it certainly is, it certainly is. Now, Brian, you've been a uh, egg farmer for quite some years, haven't you? Uh, yeah, well, look, uh, my family's been in farming since the late 60s, early 70s. Okay. Uh, it's longer than I've been off, alive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, started off with free range, and of course, uh, with uh, modern technology and, and uh, new systems, we moved into a cage system as well. Was it true that that was pushed by the Egg Board in Victoria? Yes, yeah, so the industry was under a regulate, it was regulated in those days, yep. and uh, we all produced eggs for the old Egg Board, and we didn't do any marketing, which, so we just produced egg supplied to the board, and yep. they did the marketing. And they uh, requested the time to move into a cage system, because that offered a, the cleaner uh, egg at the time, and uh, they wanted a okay. uniform cleaner egg, and that's the way the industry was put. Okay, fantastic. So that's been a major change, hasn't it? Yes. So, and of course now, with uh, consumer demand, uh, the industry's had to move back to more free range as well because yep. uh, people um, I believe that there's, there's a better animal welfare outcome and uh, that's why they want the free range eggs. Okay, well that's a notion that we are going to explore yeah. here today on the show. And on the end here we've got David Scornick. David's a um, generational farmer. Mate, you've been in it a long time, haven't you? Born into it. Fantastic. Been in it a long time. Okay, excellent. Can you tell us some of the changes that you would have noticed over the past, say, 10 years? Well, oh, the ten, like 10 years, uh, the changes have been monumental. Okay. We've gone from systems, old cage systems, the, the type of stuff that you see on the internet, yep. the, the really horrible looking uh, farming methods, yep. to what we do today, which is a lot more complex. Yep. Uh, we look after the birds better. We know what to feed them. We know how to feed them well. The genetics of the chooks are different. Yep. We're getting many more eggs okay. per bird yep. because people are eating a lot more eggs as well. well Consumption's definitely up, isn't it? Very much so. Okay, fantastic. And you mentioned before about uh, white eggs and brown eggs. Yes. Now, what's the difference? Uh, that's complicated. Okay. Right. Why are some eggs brown and other eggs white, mate? It's to do with the colour of the chook. Is that all? White chicks, oh, really? white eggs, brown chickens, they brown eggs. Okay. <laughs> There you go, there's something that consumers at home may not know. <laughs> now, we all love our googie eggs. I'd love to throw over to James to have a little bit of a chat about what's so great about these things, apart from the taste. James, what can you tell us about these guys? Well, Chris, you know, eggs are, are they're a, a nutritional powerhouse. You know, they're certainly one of the most natural um, protein products there is available to, yep. to, to eat. A fresh, perishable product. Uh, it's got every vitamin except vitamin C. So all 12 B group vitamins, for example. You get that in your orange juice anyway, when you... Well, vitamin C, your complete yeah. <laughs> meal is a glass of orange juice and an egg. So but don't stop at one, one and have two. So from that perspective, you know, you can eat an egg a day, an egg a day is okay. Yep. 
Uh, but again, as I said, don't stop at one, have two or three. You know, eggs provide such great value. Yep. Uh, not only are they a nutritional powerhouse, but they're so versatile and convenient. Yeah. Either as a meal solution in, the, in their own right, centre of the plate, a fried egg, a boiled egg, but why not also have it as an ingredient in a meal? Yeah. You know, so eggs are so versatile, so convenient, such great value, and so healthy. They are pretty good. We do love our eggs, don't we, Brian? We all love them. Absolutely. Absolutely. What about um, cholesterol? David, good point. You know, cholesterol is an interesting issue. Um, eggs were really, um, they were given a bad rap in the, in the 70s, uh, for example, had too much cholesterol. Well, eggs do have dietary cholesterol, but there are a lot of other foods that have dietary cholesterol. But what we've discovered, what the health community discovered over the last 15 years or so, is it's not the intake of dietary cholesterol that causes cardiovascular disease. Okay. It's not dietary cholesterol, it's actually blood cholesterol. Okay. And dietary cholesterol does not equate to blood cholesterol. He's so a bit too smart for us, isn't he? <laughs> so what does, though, what does, though, is saturated fats. Yeah. So foods high in saturated fats causes blood cholesterol issues and hence cardiovascular disease, not dietary cholesterol. So the gooey egg, you can eat many of these. Yep. You, know, you can you keep eating eggs. An egg a day, more than one egg a day is okay. So that's the great news for consumers of what is a great value product. I hope so, because my kids smash through eggs. They love them. Well, they'd be getting all the vitamins, except vitamin C, obviously. Yep. All the protein, all the nutritional needs. So it's quite a contentious topic with uh, consumers of egg products. Uh, we've got different farming systems that we use that are often used in the marketing of eggs. So we often talk about cage eggs, we talk about cage-free eggs, and we talk about free-range eggs. Now, cage-free and barn, guys, I'm, I'm a little bit confused. Yeah, look, no, no difference. Uh, so Chris. it's the same thing, is it? It's the same thing. You know, cage, okay. A barn egg, a barn laid egg, is basically an egg that's been laid by a chicken. Yep. It's not in a cage, yeah. so it's cage free. Yeah. Okay, so just in a big open space, are they? Big open house, big open shed, call it what you will. Okay. They're in a big shed yep. and they're just mingling around in that shed. Yep. They're barn laid. Okay. Free to move wherever they are. But they don't go outside, do they? No, they don't go outside. Okay, good. so that's yeah. the difference with free range, is it? Yes. Okay, so what, what I'd love to do, while I've got you guys in as industry experts, I'd really love to look at the three systems, cage, cage free or barn, and free range. Now, I'd like to put the following criteria on each of the farming systems. So first of all, because it's quite emotive, the welfare of the chicken. So obviously we're looking at freedom, we're looking at access to feed and water, and protection mm -hmm. from predation or predators. Uh, the cost of the production system, because obviously we need to make sure that things are cost effective for our consumers. Now, the quality of the egg. Now, there's a lot of different talk about different productions create different sort of eggs and quality and all that sort of stuff. So, the one I'd really like to start with, if we can, guys, is cage farming, because there's a lot of emotion around cage farming. Now, I'd love to um, just try and maybe dispel some of the myths. So, we've all taken part in cage farming. Um, now, what, what are some of the positives of uh, cage farming, right? Yeah. Well, when you look at all the systems, they all have their pros and cons. Yep, absolutely. Right? So when it comes to cage farming, we have a controlled environment. Yep. So by doing that, we're, we're protecting them a lot better from vermins and predators. Yep. Uh, we're also getting a much cleaner egg. So when it comes to food safety, that's a very key issue. Is that because of the diet, Brian? Well, you know what they're eating? Or? Yeah, we know what they're eating, but also we're separating the eggs from the manure immediately because oh, they'll sit on the cage through. and they'll fall through. Yep. So we're getting a much cleaner egg. Yep. And that was one of the main reasons we moved into cage in the first place, because we wanted a uniform, cleaner egg for the for people. Yeah, so and the health of the bird. And the most important, we were able to protect the birds, make them healthier. Well, yeah. not make them, but help them protect them from getting sick. So yeah, I can say disease very, control. Yeah, it was very much uh, a lot easier to control disease. Okay. Right. Certainly, for, certainly for across the industry, Chris, we see lower mortality okay. uh, in cage or intensive type farming systems. Yes. And the, 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 for, the beauty about the egg industry is we provide that choice to consumers. We certainly do. So we're talking about cages, which is the more intensive end. But from that perspective, certainly as Brian said, you know, it's protection from soil and manure-borne diseases, protection yep. from predators, yep. so certainly lower mortality rates. Yep. So from that perspective, um, we're talking about a healthy bird, and David mentioned that earlier, a healthy bird, which is yeah. important here. It is. And, and so the well-being of the bird. You know, so there's no perfect farming system yet. We no. keep looking for one, <laughs> yeah. and, we, and we keep working to, in terms of trying to increase 
can adopt new technology. Yep. Uh, but at the moment, we, we try to improve the welfare outcomes of the birds in all systems. Absolutely. But cages are certainly an important component. Yeah, the, the average price, Chris, for example, of eggs, you know, caged eggs, $3.16 for a dozen eggs. Okay. Now, that provides great value to a consumer yep. of what is a very versatile, convenient and healthy product. Yep. Around the world, 88% you know, of total egg production in the world is from cage systems. 88%. You're the king of the statistic, aren't you, James? In Australia, <laughs> yeah. in Australia, 68% of production okay. is in cage systems. Yeah. So that provides the base load, the, the, the base supply to what is a hungry market who's, uh, who's very cost conscious when they shop. Yep. So from that perspective, the industry is proud uh, to produce a cage deck, which provides a value proposition to the consumer. So obviously we've covered off the, the welfare of the chook, you know, she, she's in a cage, there's no question there. Disease control is a major thing because, uh, as we've known, uh, overseas, I think it was avian influenza came in, in the US and wiped out, I don't know what kind of stats, man. <laughs> um, it, it, it wiped out five to six million um, laying hens. Wow. And, yes. and that, that yes. is a significant issue for the industry and, and anyone who cares about animals yep. would be devastated by that fact. So, at biosecurity, quarantine, if you like, yep. or certainly disease control, yep. they're all the same, are really, is really important to the industry. Yep. And predators. So, obviously, we've got to protect the, bear, the birds from uh, predators. We're talking about foxes, eagles, yeah, hawks. Hawks, yeah. All those okay. type of things. They're a tasty yeah. treat, unfortunately, our and birds for a lot of As predators. good as a farmer is, Chris, and you can have your animals looking after your free range birds, so like your dogs and things like that. You can't control eagles and hawks, so no, you you're, you're going to lose a percentage there. So, so the, more, like the more intensive the system yeah. like cages, the better control uh, the stockman or the husbandry yeah. person, the farmer if you like it, uh, has over those birds okay. and can look after the welfare of those birds. Mm -hmm. yep. it, one other thing too that we haven't touched on is uh, climate, the weather. Yeah. yeah. Right. So in these uh, cage sheds, uh, we can control the temperature in the sheds. The sheds are basically air conditioned. So the chickens are living in 22 to 24 degrees all year round, regardless of 40 degrees outside or zero outside. Yeah. Okay. Right. So they're that. in optimal condition. Yeah. So what does this do to the egg, guys? A cage egg, how would that compare in terms of quality? Look, the, the eggs nutritionally, Chris, they're exactly the same. Okay. Right? It doesn't matter whether they come out of a cage, barn or free range system. Yep. Uh, if you get people to question whether one tastes better than the other. Well, that comes back to what you're being fed. It's pretty diet, simple. Yeah, okay. Pretty simple. What you put in is what you get out. Okay. So if a bird's fed a different diet, the taste can can be different. Yeah. And, but and the it's system, a pretty similar diet, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, well, now diet, most farmers systems. in commercial farming, we we have nutritionists that yeah. formulate our diet. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So those diets are the optimum diet for those birds. So they they fed the best possible food that they can get. Okay. There's no chemicals and hormones or antibiotics like people imply at times. Oh, that was one of our myths yeah. that we're going to talk about. I'll, I'll tell you what, Chris, <laughs> we, we, did some, we did some work with consumers on this. Yeah. And uh, we actually didn't tell consumers what type of farming system these eggs were from. Mm -hmm. And it was a, ta it was a taste panel. You know, yeah, and, right. and they tasted the egg. And, and they all thought that eggs tasted fantastic. And there was no difference, <laughs> no, no difference between the taste of the three systems. Yep. Now, the... The, the last criteria point that we wanted to cover up was the ability, now we're talking about cage eggs and the ability of the cage egg to meet our consumption and population growth. How would you see that? Look, that's that very up? important because chickens will lay more through the spring months and less through the winter months. And as David said earlier, by controlling the temperature in those sheds 24-7, we are getting production all year round. So we're not getting to the periods through winter where we're short of eggs. We can supply eggs the consumer right the way through the year but if we move completely to a free range system we're going to have those peaks and drops in our okay. production system. Also Chris don't forget that you know the Australian population is growing at such a rate that in the next literally next 10-20 years we will need to increase egg production by about 126%. Yeah. There I go again with the statistics. He loves yeah, it. Loves <laughs> so so that, that, is, that, is, that is more than doubling yeah. our current production capacity over the next 10 to 20 years. So obviously the more intensive, as we're talking about the cage, that must give a facility to grow. Well, the, the more managed to the environment. Yeah. So from that perspective, whilst there's a range of consumers out there demanding different things, and that let's celebrate choice and variety. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. At the end of the day, we need to be able to provide a base load of, of eggs, which is a nutritional powerhouse for the community, yep. uh, to buy and eat.
fantastic. All right, well, I think we've covered off the, uh, the criteria there of cage eggs. We'll be back after this short break to uh, have a look at some life on a cage farm. So we're here on a, a cage farm. We're going to bring you viewers a bit of an insight into a cage farm. So thank you very much, Brian, for letting us in to have a look at the farm. Um, I guess there's been a lot of controversy around cage farming. And what we want to do is clear up some of the myths, don't we? Some of the misconceptions and stories that we hear. All right, so um, I guess the birds are in cages, that's correct. Yeah. Now, what are some of the uh, what are some of the advantages around having the birds in cages? Yeah, well, the advantage is, as you saw when we walked in, it's a closed environment here. Yep. So we we don't uh, have any wild birds or vermin and things like that in there. So okay. really, that reduces the risk of disease. Yes. Yeah. So okay. that's very important because wild birds and rats and mice they carry diseases. Yep. Like David here, he yeah, can yeah, do yeah. as well. <laughs> Right, we're standing in amongst it now. You can hear the noise. These birds are really talking. Yeah. And white chickens, white eggs, brown, brown chickens, chickens, brown, brown eggs. eggs. Have a look. And look how clean these eggs are, David. After a spotless. Well, yeah, look. Do you wash your eggs? No, we don't need to wash them. And why is that? Well, all you need is a really good diet for the birds so their, their system's working properly. And then the eggs roll away from the feces. They roll away from the birds. Uh, separated from it and they just stay nice and clean. Yeah. I hope you can hear this because I can't hardly hear myself talking yeah. with all the noises <laughs> going on around us. Well it's a busy time of the day for the chickens, it's at their peak lay period so they're busy eating, drinking and uh, laying those eggs. Fantastic. What happens yeah. with the manure? Well the manure, if you, it's sort of very hard to see but underneath every tier there's a full belt and what happens is the manure falls through the wire mesh onto that belt and is taken out weekly. So you don't have that ammonia build up in the shed. So as you can see it's, it's clean fresh air, very easy to breathe. No smell, no smell. Feed, feed in front of them at all times. So they can eat, they can access their feed whenever they want. In the back there there's water nipples so they can access their water at any time. Here you've got the eggs that roll down to an egg saver wire. Every half an hour, that wire will just lift up, let that down, down slowly. So that reduces the amount of breakages. So oh, okay. we can as many eggs as we can. Yeah. yeah. They look clean. They look good. The eggs look fantastic. Yeah. And just think of it, David. They come from the chooks into the carton, and there is no need to handle eggs at all. So that reduces the risk of any contamination. Great. Well, having just walked through a cage farm, I'm actually really shocked at how healthy and happy the birds look. Well, look, they've got everything they need, yep. Chris. They've got their food, their water. Yep. The temperature is that ideal for those chooks. It's where they're most happy. It's yep. around that 20 to 22 degrees day and night. doesn't matter if it's 44 outside or yep. 4 degrees outside. Yep. So we keep them as happy as we can because a healthy, happy bird is a bird that lays eggs. Yep. It's as simple as that. It's what you've got to remember at home. These yeah. guys as farmers, their objective is to keep their birds as happy and healthy as possible. So, I mean, all these confronting... Um, videos and stuff that we've seen of all these emaciated birds and all this sort of stuff. It's not how good farmers operate, is it, Dave? How much different is this to what it was, say, 10 years ago? Oh, no, it's been a big difference. We've grown up in it, David, you and I. And, I don't know uh, if he's grown up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. But uh, the way our parents farmed, well, that was the um, technology at the time. Yeah. It, it has advanced a lot. We've seen uh, different types of cages, different types of systems that we can better manage our birds with and improve their welfare and, and we're still working towards improving their welfare you yep. know we've, we've got an industry that spends a lot of money back into research and yep. development and that's what we want to do you know if we find a better system and the science shows us that well that's the way we'll move yeah so the next one one that's probably a system that's really not well known in this country is cage free or barn system now guys Dave you, you've done a bit of barn farming can you tell us a little bit about it it's fairly new Okay. Uh, as far as the farming system in this country, yep. uh, with the technology that's used, mainly coming from overseas, they've got a lot of experience over there with barn systems. Uh, Which part of the world? Uh, Europe. Okay. Europe, predominantly Europe, because yep. the Europeans have gone that way. Yep. Um, uh, basically, the chickens are running around, uh, loose in the shed. Uh, depending on the system, there's aviary systems, there's just flat deck systems where just single nest boxes, the chickens can go in and lay their eggs yep. and the eggs will roll off and or convey and be taken out. There's aviary systems where the chickens can climb all over them, yep. right, so they can have a bit more fun. Uh, feeding, drinking, uh, 
climate control in the sheds, the birds are looked after well. Uh, and with these systems, again, the animal husbandry, the farmers can quite easily walk through the shed and check on their flock and check on the birds as okay. they go through. Great, so we, you've just touched on the welfare of the chooks, so the chooks out running around and all that sort of stuff. What are the cost of producing barn eggs versus, say, cage or free range? Wow, the cost is slightly more. Okay. Okay, for slightly more than cage eggs, cheaper than free range. Okay. Uh, the reasons for that is uh, pr primarily the birds are running around more. Yep. Right, so they're expending a lot more energy. Yep. Uh, they're eating a lot more feed. Okay. The other thing is it takes more people to look after them. Okay, so more well. labour required. It's more labour yep. intensive. Okay. Now, do you have the same sort of climatic control that you have in the cage system we mentioned earlier? Yes. Yep. Oh, full. Okay, excellent, excellent. Um, safety of the egg, um, microbiologically. Uh, well, a little less than cage, yep. although the birds do lay their, ca their eggs in uh, nest boxes. Okay, so they're not just down on the floor, they're actually just down going on the floor. No, 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 the, the birds are, are trained actually, Okay. over, over a, a, small, a short period of time, and yep. they get to know how to get into the nest box and lay their eggs in the nest box. It's nice and dark and quiet in there, Okay. so they're, 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 they feel protected, they feel safe, they lay their egg, the egg rolls off onto a conveyor. And it's taken out. Okay. To the it's, a, it's actually a good farming system, you know. Yeah. So from that perspective, it's just unfortunate that it's only about seven percent of total production. Why do we not do so it? So it, it's. I, I think there's some confusion in the market about. Okay. The cage, you know, they want caged eggs, they want a free range egg, but yep. there's this cage free or barn egg, as you say, Chris. Yeah. You know, in the yeah. middle here. And as David, you, know, you said, you know, it's about these these hens in a shed or in a house. Yep. Uh, right, they're not in cages. Uh, but you know, the, the, they cost about four dollars fifty-eight on average, which yep. is the retail price per dozen. That's forty-five okay. percent more than caged eggs. Okay. Uh, but as David said, it's the feed, it's the labour, there's additional costs. He loves his numbers, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. He's it's unbelievable. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, <laughs> the ability of the barn or cage-free system to meet the needs of our growing population and consumption? Not as intensive as cage. Okay. So less birds per house per shed. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right, so you need more sheds. So more space, more, more land required. More space, space, more land, more equipment. Yep. Okay. We can, uh, we, we spoke about disease and all that sort of stuff. Now the birds, you mentioned the birds don't go outside. So how does that go with controlling disease? Uh, controlling disease, that's good because uh, if they don't go outside, you can't, um, Mixed with wild birds that's and things right. like okay. that. So that's the main main carriers of disease. The, okay. The wild still, birds. Still, still contained, still, yeah. still managed. Yep. Yeah. 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 Still okay. keep inside. Fantastic. Okay. So we might actually jump onto a uh, cage free or barn system and see how it all works because it really is a lot of confusion around this. So let's shoot over to farm and see how it all goes. Here we are, we've uh, gone out to a barn farm to have a look. We're meeting our resident farmer, Andrew. Andrew, thanks for joining us on the show. No worries. Um, Andrew, can you tell us a little bit about barn farming? Because a lot of the people, a lot of our viewers aren't really familiar with barn or cage-free farming. Yeah. So yeah, like you said, barns cage-free where they, they run around, uh, around the shed. Um, mm. They're confined within the shed. Okay, um, so they don't go outside at all? No, no, they're just confined in the shed and um, uh, I think it's better in a way because disease-wise, we can control that a lot better. Okay, yeah. that's really important. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, excellent. So you mentioned earlier that you had done some free-range farming yeah. earlier on. Yeah. What yeah, happened there? Right. So yeah, we we started out with the barn shed, and um, I decided to put pop holes in the side and yeah. um, let them out. Yeah. And it wasn't long after that um, started getting problems with production, and then mortalities went up, uh, and disease outbreaks. And, oh, um, wow. Yeah, Problem, yeah. What do you mean by problems with production? Oh, production just, uh, the production dropped and, um, and then... Oh, so weren't laying as many eggs? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, and mortality, so yeah. birds were dying. Yeah, birds were dying and, um, yeah, and uh, I had the vet come in and say, look, you better lock them up because, um, yeah, it's not worth uh, these free range affecting the whole, the whole the rest of the farm, so... Okay, yeah. wow. Okay, yeah. so... Is there, sorry, is there a market for these eggs? Uh, yeah, there is, there is, yeah. That's growing, it's not growing as quick as the free range, but it is growing, yeah, and uh, and it is a good system because, uh, like I said, they're confined in the shed and... Uh, and uh, but they're not in cages, are they? No, they're not in cages, but they're in the shed, but, um, and, and uh, you can control them a lot better uh, disease-wise, as, as uh, I found out the hard way. Yeah. And they lay eggs in nests? 
you got no problem getting them into the... How do they get into the nest? So, with the nests, uh, you have to train them from the start. So, uh, when, they, when they do start laying eggs, uh, they start laying them all over the floor. But as, as, uh, as they start laying eggs, you collect the ones off the floor and then they tend to go into the nests that are dark so they can lay their ne nests. So they look for a dark spot to lay they look, them. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh, fantastic. So it yeah. sounds like a pretty good system of farming. Yeah. I guess the bird's free, she's able to walk around, she's able to stretch her wings and all that sort of stuff, yeah. yet she's not exposed to the elements. She doesn't get the diseases or the predators or anything like that. Exactly, that's right. Yep. Yep. Okay. So can they produce as many eggs in a barn system as they can in a cage system? They get close, not as good as a cage, but they do get close to, to the cage system. And is there more labour involved? Is it harder to produce them in a barn system than in a System. Yeah, there is a lot more labour involved. Uh, there's, like I said, there's floor eggs to collect. Um, managing the birds is more difficult because, uh, say, you've got a sick one, it's a lot harder to catch, and there's more, a lot more labour involved, a lot more uh, management of the birds compared to cage systems. Well, we've just had a look around. I've got to say, it looks like a great system. I, I think from a production standpoint, but also seeing that the birds are out and about. To me, it's quite an impressive setup that, that Andrew's got here, but also yeah. the barn system in general. Nice, neat, clean, tidy, yeah. the eggs coming out, they look perfect, going onto that grading machine that you have. Does everyone have a grader like that? Uh, pretty much, that are, yeah, most of the farmers I know do, yeah. yeah. Okay. Alright, you may wonder why we're sitting in the boardroom filming this. Um, we went out to the farm, the weather's turned fairly gnarly out there, it's raining yeah. sideways. Into the coffee, yeah, that's into why. the coffee as well, so <laughs> I'm a bit of a diva. <laughs> Excellent. Well, Andrew, thank you so much. No I think we've really shed some light on the cage free or barn system for us. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Andrew. No worries. Thank you. Welcome back. So, probably the most discussed farming method at the moment would be free range. Now, guys, I don't know a great deal about free range. So, Brian, can you tell me a little bit about it? Well, it's free range is fairly simple. It means that they've got the freedom to roam outside. Okay. So, uh, I know people are getting confused, but it should not should not really get confused. Okay. Now these chickens, they have the option, the, the doors are opened, or what we call pop holes. Okay. They're opened eight hours a day, Yep. a minimum of six at, okay. at least. So what's that, just a little hole in the side of the yeah, shed? Yeah, well we, we have um, regulations that say that you have got to have a certain size pop hole yep. and, okay. and so many per thousand birds, so that there's enough room for them to access outside whenever they feel like it. Okay, right. so that would have to be, is that good for the welfare of the chook getting out and about? Well, there's different ways of measuring welfare, yeah. but of course some people now have this um, idyllic view that being let out is the better for them and they're prepared to buy those eggs. So we as uh, farmers need to produce to the demands of consumers, Okay. right? So when they're let out, we know that they're going to be exposed to certain um, predators and certain diseases. But of course we have to manage that as farmers, uh, okay. no matter what. So you're saying like, obviously predators or sort of foxes and things get That's them. right. So some farmers decide to put some dogs around, some may end up putting fences, uh, closing them off in certain areas. Uh, some may um, uh, only let them out at certain times of the day to try and protect them the best they can. So farmers will look at different ways of managing their flocks. I suppose, okay. Brian, you know, it, it's yeah. certainly a more extensive system. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and where, where it's more extensive, it's less, it, it's less managed. That's right. Uh, there, okay. There's less control. Yeah. Uh, so as a result, those birds may have the freedom to move and roam around, yeah. uh, which is obviously, could be an advantage, seem to be an advantage. Yeah. But uh, there's also some disadvantages associated with that system. Okay. And it comes back to the issue you mentioned yeah. earlier, Brian. You know, there's yeah. advantages and disadvantages That's for right. all these different farming systems. Okay, so the birds are out and about. Someone mentioned before about diseases and interaction with wild birds. Now, is that really does that come into play quite regularly, or oh, it certainly does. The mortal does that... mortality rates in free range systems is far higher than the other two systems. Oh wow! Okay, yeah. uh, and the reason for that is basically disease is, is is the major one. The birds get sick. Okay, um, there's a lot of it's like having people in an office in a high rise building. So we'll get the flu with, and yeah. someone walks in with a cold. Pretty soon, everyone's got it. Okay, so you're saying that, well, being outside with the free range, so a duck comes in and everyone catches the, they all catch the that's disease right. and off they go. That's the worst. Well, well you yeah. mean, that's true though, because, because Chris, you mentioned ducks. Yeah. Uh, well, waterfowl in particular, you know, yeah. they're, they're carriers of, of influenza. 
Mm. So from that perspective, you know, when we do get these diseases, the last thing we want to look after the welfare of our birds is for them to get sick. So when we okay. talk about such things as antibiotics, which are rarely used in the egg industry, yeah. but when they are used, uh, there's usually more use in extensive farming systems than intensive systems. So free range is more likely to have, say, antibiotics and or um, what, vaccines and things? Well, yeah. more likely, yep. uh, understandably, because of course, yeah, yeah. soil and manure-borne diseases, etc. Yep. So from that perspective, um, if they are used, they're probably more likely in these extensive systems. Now we're going back into more free range because of consumer demand. Yeah. I mean, we're farmers. We we produce to the market. That's what we do. You have to. Yeah. Right. There's no point producing something we can't sell. Yeah. So because of the higher number of birds outside, the more risk we have of these diseases. The bottom line on this, Chris, from my perspective, is that there's usually, in terms of welfare or the well-being of the mm. bird, there's usually larger differences in the welfare outcomes of the bird within systems okay. than between them. Okay. So, for example, yeah. I've seen a really well run and managed from caged farm, yep. uh, and you can see the welfare of those birds is really well looked after and cared for. Yep. I've seen a really poorly run free range farm, and the welfare of those birds, you can just see, it, it just horrifies you. Wow. Now, I've seen the opposite as well, yeah. uh, but at the yeah. end of the day, it's about the husbandry and the management of the farmer and the care that he or she has for those birds. It's not the farming system. Wow, okay, so it's more about the people, the, the quality of the managers, the husbandry and all those things. Okay, what about in the free range system, the safety and the quality of the eggs? Now I'm talking about microbiologically. How would a free range egg, how would it compare? Can you control the diet? Well, you can control the diet, but the main thing is about getting clean eggs. Clean yep. eggs is the yep. most important. You want to get your eggs away from feces as quick as possible or have no contact with feces. Now, as much as you'd like to in a free range system, if you've got nesting boxes and they're laying in those boxes, you've, it comes back to the farm, they've got to regularly clean those boxes to make sure those eggs stay clean. Yep. Uh, you've got to have a proper diet so they, they lay those eggs yep. clean, you know, those type of things. So there's a lot of factors that can do. So as James said earlier, it comes back to farm management. Yep. Farmers that have been in this industry for a long period of time, they know what to do to make sure they get the best eggs when, they produce, when they're being produced. What about the uh, ability of the free-range farming system to meet population consumption growth, James? Well, that's a big issue at the moment because when we look, talk about outdoor range areas, well, there's only so much land that is available. So from that perspective, you know, who's going to meet the, 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 this increasing demand for eggs? It's wow, more, okay. more going to be the intensive cave systems yeah. than the free-range systems. Okay. okay. And wow. there's been a lot of talk about 10,000 or 1,500 birds per hectare. The stocking density outside in those areas, if it's managed properly, can still be run well, yep. running a higher density than a small. So it comes back to management, as we've said a lot of times. You've got to understand the sustainability comes into this as well. Yeah. We're living in an arid country. Australia is basically a desert country. Yep. Uh, birds running out into green pastures it is not really existent. No. In summer, they're not green pastures. Okay. Yeah. So I think that's given us a little bit of an outline on the free range system. Might actually shoot out to a free range farm and have a look at how it all works. Let's do that. That's good. Well, we've been lucky to be joined by Lua Free Range Farmer here. We're actually out. Um, we've had a bit of a walk around the farm, but unfortunately the weather gods haven't really smiled on us, have they? No, oh, well, this is the morning peninsula. It's one of the greenest spots in uh, Victoria. Rain and wind, and yes, so it's, yes. we haven't been blessed with the weather today. But Luke, can you tell us a little bit about free range? You're a veteran of the industry. How long have you been free range farming? Oh, uh, ten years. Okay. Uh, well, what can I say? Uh, it has its uh, problems, just like yep. all the other systems have their problems. We have ours. You know, if it rains too much, the ground gets wet. It, uh, the puddles in places. Yes. Hens go and drink from the puddles. And, oh, okay. Uh, Anything else that's in the puddle, well, if there's any problem with it, they end up usually having it. That's a problem we haven't spoken about, Dave. The, the water control, with, with them being outside. The disease control that comes with it. Okay. Yeah, well, if you want, to, if you want free range in a green paddock with grass for most of the year, you're going to have water. There's no yep. other way around it. Yep. So we're always vigilant to keep checking on them, check their lay rates, pick them up, physically look at them, and make sure that uh, they're not going backwards. Yeah. What are you checking for, though? Uh, they get they uh, 
they keep getting parasites, internal parasites like uh, worms. They've got to be wormed every five or six weeks. Unfortunately, being hens, they don't know any different. That they'll they excrete the uh, the worms and the and the worm eggs, but as soon as they excrete them, they'll go pick them back up again and, oh, and eat them. That's not good. Well, <laughs> no. Well, they're hens. This is the yeah. natural. They're a forager, aren't they? Yes, they are. Okay. So we've, we've talked about production in the other systems. What's production like out of free range? Realistically, it is not as not as good as uh, Barnlow yep. and certainly nowhere near as good as uh, Cage. Okay. That's why the price is higher than uh, Cage yep. because of the production costs are totally different. Yeah, you mentioned before about um, one of your neighbours has been shooting a lot of foxes. Do you have a lot of problems with predators in the free range system? Well, right? the Mornington Peninsula is full of foxes. I think there's more foxes than people sometimes. <laughs> yeah, except on long weekends. Well, mate. the neighbour across the road, the neighbour across the road in the last month, he shot 100 foxes. Wow. That's what he. Uh, that's what he told me. 100. You've got a okay. lot of space. I notice there's not a lot of birds outside. Well, if you notice, there is a lot of birds in in some places. Where there's no grass, that's where they tend to congregate. When they start digging, because they like to dust bath, what they're really doing is looking for bugs, something to eat, some meat to eat. Okay. And that's where they tend to go. You look in the middle of the paddock where you want them to be, because they look much nicer yeah. that way, and people driving past say, well, isn't that nice? You might drop in and buy a dozen eggs off this man. Uh, they're not there. Most of them tend to congregate near the uh, buildings, uh, wherever they've dug and foraged before, that's where they keep going. But they don't eat the grass? No, they they might eat the occasional one and then change their mind very quickly after they've eaten and say, well, no, that wasn't very nice. They're looking for bugs. They're looking for meat. Okay. One quick thing. Um, Mornington Peninsula, you mentioned some uh, migratory birds. We've got a lot of birds around here, don't they? What kind of birds? Migratory birds. So. So what do we get there? Do we get you mean seeds? ducks? Ducks? Waterfowl? Well, we're always scared of ducks. Yep. We've got two dams, we've got them fenced off, and I I just, uh, every year when I see the ducks come in and land on the on the, on the dams, I, I start to worry, because they do bring some very bad diseases. You know, once we're in Europe, they virtually wipe out all the uh, population of uh, fowls. Wow. Yeah. Bird flu, that's what you don't want to hear. Bird flu. We we shudder every time. Okay, I think that's given us a pretty good insight into free range. Um, yeah, it's definitely opened my eyes a lot to the difficulties that the free range farmers and the birds encounter. Well, I think uh, se small section of the community is everybody uh, riled up about um, hens in general being locked up. Uh, but I. Uh, I like seeing the, the hens out. I love it when they're all 100% fit. Yep. Looks good. All looks beautiful. Yep. I love it. And because we uh, want the people to come in and buy the eggs. After all, at the end of the day, we have to stay in business. Yep. And that's the only way you're going to stay in business is by selling my product. And if it costs more to produce because of the, uh, the problems I talked about before, well, so be it. If they yep. want them, they've got to pay a little bit. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Lou, for joining us, and you've really been explained. A, been a pleasure. Yeah, right. excellent. All right, we might shoot back to the panel. All right, so these blokes have been giving me a bit of a hard time. Apparently, my uh, shaved head looks like a bit of a mirror ball on camera. Well, it's it's like right, David's oh, neck. No, <laughs> like an egg. <laughs> anyway, so one of the things that we've noticed around egg production and eggs is there's a lot of myths and mysteries around them. Antibiotics, James? Oh, well, that, that is certainly a myth. Yep. Uh, hormones have never been used in the egg industry, Chris. Okay. Uh, never at all. Uh, antibiotics are rarely used. Yep. Used under veterinary advice, uh, and usually more so in the more extensive systems like free range. Okay. More so than the intensive systems like cage. Yep. And the reason being is there's usually a bit more disease that can happen in extensive systems. Okay, fantastic. Next one. This one will go to Brian. Brian, is there a taste difference between a free range and a cage egg? No, there's no taste difference or nutritional difference. The only thing that will determine that is what they're being fed. So if for some reason someone's feeding them a different diet, well that will give them a different taste. But the system itself doesn't make any difference. Okay. Alright, I was reading a newspaper article the other morning while I was eating my eggs and uh, orange juice 
And I saw something about chemicals that are being used apparently to colour the yolks. Is this correct, Dave? Marigold, capsicum, and paprika. <laughs> are they chemicals? Seriously. Yeah, seriously. So they're all what it is. naturally That's occurring what it is. products. Yep. Yeah. Okay, no worries. I'll shoot over to James. James, um, free range eggs. I've read a few articles lately saying that some of them are labelled but not actually free range. Oh, well, well that's, that's not right at all. You know, all, all eggs that are labelled free range are actually free range eggs in the pack. And anyone who, who any producer or farmer uh, that does anything different to that uh, is breaking the law and the industry does not support that practice mm, at all. certainly doesn't. Okay, yeah. excellent. The million dollar question. To refrigerate or not refrigerate eggs, James? Well, eggs should be refrigerated to look after, look after the quality of the egg. Okay. So from that perspective, when eggs, when, when the consumer takes their eggs home, they should put them in the fridge. Yep. Keep them in the carton, yep. which is important, but to keep, keep them in the fridge. Okay, can I add to that? Yeah. When you're going to go to cook them, like meat, pull them out and let them, um, not defrost obviously, but let them warm up to room temperature. Okay. Cool. Okay, fantastic. Uh, there's products like mayonnaise and hollandaise sauce. Now, Brian, can you just, um, they're, they're uncooked products, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, well, that's the important time to refrigerate it. If you're going to make a raw egg product like aioli or mayonnaise, then don't leave it sitting on the counter all day and just refrigerate those products. Don't. If you don't take them out when you're going to use them. I thought the industry was pushing against Well, the well no, Chris, it's interesting you say that because at food service in restaurants, for example, mm. where we do have the odd occasion of a salmonella, salmonellosis outbreak, yeah. it's mainly because we see these products made with raw egg that have not been refrigerated yeah. or looked after. So it's not the egg itself, okay. it's the way the product's been handled. And okay. it always happens, whether it's a buffet or a smorgasbord, where that product's been sitting on the bench all day. And Dave, what about this story that um, Europe's banned cage eggs, is that correct? They've changed the legislation, uh, they haven't banned cage eggs at all. 60%, close to 60%, I think it's 58%, is that right? Yeah, that's yeah. right, yeah. Yeah. Of uh, eggs produced in Europe are still in cages. Okay. They are larger cages, they're furnished cages. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. One of the other myths is that there's an Asian country, I'm not sure which one, has just recently banned free-range eggs because of the avian influenza. James, can you shed any light on that? Well, that, that's a big concern for Asian countries. You know, certainly yeah. in China, for example. And there's some countries that will actually, it's actually more costly uh, for a caged egg than a free-range egg. Really? Uh, because of the demand for what is, a, what is perceived to be a safer egg. Okay. So from that perspective, there are a number of Asian countries that are very concerned about the disease issues associated with extensive farming systems. Not only in the egg industry, but certainly the egg industry uh, is, is one industry in which they're, which they're right. really concerned. Wow, okay. There we have it. I think we've hopefully busted a few of the myths and mysteries around eggs and egg farming. If you have any more, please look us up on Facebook. We'll be at Farm Life Australia, or you can look us up on the Egg Farmers Australia page. Um, please send us through your myths and mysteries, and we'll be more than happy to uh, have a crack. Ah, exactly. <laughs> oh, no. I'm the ecstatic. You couldn't help yourself. Oh, no. I, was, I swore to myself we weren't going to do any egg jokes on this show because I hate them. But anyway, here we are now, and we're doing them. Thus concludes our uh, episode of Farm Life Australia, The Truth About Eggs. Now, while we've got the expert fellas here, just before Experts. we wrap up. Experts. Oh, Experts. no, James, can't believe you did that. <laughs> Gentlemen, one quick thing that you'd love to tell our viewers at home. So, James, what would you like to tell them? Yeah, look, Chris, just that, that people are consuming more eggs every year. Yep. We're now consuming 228 eggs per person each year. We're still he does that on go. a weekend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. We've still got a long way to go, though. The Mexicans and the Japanese uh, consume over 350 eggs per year. Wow. Uh, but uh, we are increasing our consumption, and that is great for the health of, of the community, yep. uh, plus the versatility and convenience that people can cook. Fantastic. What about you, Brian? What would you like to tell our viewers? Oh, well, the viewers to understand that uh, modern egg farming's adopted new technology, and we're using different techniques to produce the eggs that you see now. And we want people to educate themselves on those systems and understand why we've done it and how we've improved animal welfare yep. with the systems we're using. Fantastic. What about you, Dave? The chickens lay the eggs. The farmers look after the chickens and they run the systems. And if it wasn't for the farmers, you wouldn't be getting the eggs every Saturday, Sunday morning for breakfast when you're going out. Okay. So you ate eggs every morning? Oh, yeah, I do. Sitting around Mount Martha in the cafes every yeah. Monday, every morning. <laughs> okay. From myself, guys, I would just encourage you guys as viewers slash consumers, purchasers of egg products, just get all the information that you can because there really are groups out there that are just trying to give you uh, some sometimes skewed opinions about eggs. Guys, one thing that we're all passionate about, farming is about animal husbandry and 
you show me a good farmer and I'll show you someone who absolutely loves their animals and wants to look after them. It's as simple as that. Yep. Chris, yep. Hopefully we've given some information, shed a little bit of light on the egg industry and egg consumption. Guys, thank you very much. Till next time and we'll, uh, we'll see you soon. Bye. Thanks, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Cheers, guys. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, that's all, folks.